Hi, I'm Danielle, and this is Chatter Out Loud, a podcast where I share thoughts and TV commentary on shows I like to watch. Now, before I start, I want to ask that you go ahead and like, follow, share, and subscribe. And on YouTube, where I upload my companion episode of my podcast, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This way you can get a notification every time I post a new episode and you won't miss out. So welcome or welcome back. Uh, Thank you so much for joining me. Your presence is very much appreciated. Uh, We had a little break um, in between episodes, and I realized I hadn't caught up with uh, episode six of the Endgame. Um, Last week, uh, yeah, something else was on. I don't know if it was like an award show or something like that. I can't remember now, but um, we had a little break in between. And so now I'm catching up on episode six. It's titled Judge, Jury, and Executioner. And the synopsis for this episode is as follows. An inmate on a quest for redemption escapes prison. Doc comes up with a plan to take back one of the banks. All right, so let's get into it. The episode picks up right after Elena tells Val to check her pockets. Remember that? Uh, Where she finds Big Big B's address. Uh, He was the guy that killed Val's mom. Uh, All these years, Val thought he was dead, but Elena enlightens her that he is not. And it's an opportunity for her to have closure. Uh, we see Val have a flashback of the drive-by that killed her mother, and it was so um, it was so real for her to drive. Um, and it was it was real, right? Because we thought that somebody was attacking Val at the time, but uh, come to find out, she was just reliving parts of what happened in her past, right? And. After that, after we saw that, we we also saw an overwhelming need for Val to want to make peace, right? She was having an internal conflict. Uh, should she go confront this guy now that she has the address or, or not? We also see a flashback of Val as a kiddo with her mom and a lesson in how little lies could turn into big lies and how much it can corrupt you. Uh, and this, to me, explains why Val is the way she is and has this internal conflict, right? She always errs on the side of doing the right thing. She isn't about corruption. All right. uh, We see that Judge Carolyn Walsh, right? We learned a couple of episodes ago that she was one of the people in that photo of them watching the bomb uh, that killed Sergey's family on their wedding day, uh, on Sergey and Elena's wedding day. Um, She is also one of Elena's targets in this episode. All right, so the judge is claiming she has nothing to do with that operation. uh, But if we learn anything, we know... The judge has a secret, right? (laughs) She's in that photo. She's a target. And of course, she's saying, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's talking, uh, she's saying this to the director, right? And we know that Elena doesn't do things coincidentally. Everything is planned out. All right. So uh, we suspect as the audience, right, that, okay, judge has a secret. And that secret is all wrapped up around the guy she sentenced 10 years ago. Um, his name was Jamie Alfonso and he happens to break out of prison and he's breaking out of prison with Elena's Snow White crew, right? And they wind up kidnapping the judge. Uh, Jamie was put away for the murder, um, of, for murdering a member of the Marble, Marbley family. Uh, Val and Anthony are investigating Jamie Alfonso to which they get a clue to follow the corruption, right? So everything's planned out. We also learned that the judge was the director's girlfriend in law school. I thought that was an interesting fact. Uh, And it kind of played into this episode because the director couldn't believe that judge. He didn't want to believe that the judge was corrupt in any way. Anyway, the eyewitness in the Jamie Alfonso case was a front Uh, And the judge overlooked that evidence in his case. The witness in his case and 25 other cases uh, were all paid off, all resulting in guilty verdicts. Uh, The witnesses were employees at the watch repair shop owned by the same corporation that owned the storage company where they found the dead reporter. Remember Ming? I think that was her name um, earlier in the season. So this is all tying together. Um, All of the trials under Judge Carolyn Walsh were covering up crimes committed by the Belloc family. We hear that name again. 
Uh, so the judge was being paid off. That was part of the corruption. And it was so heartbreaking for the director to find out that the woman he once loved and admired was so corrupted. And he wound up saying, Booker. No, <laughs> he, he said cuffer. Um, I was going to say Booker, Dano, like in Hawaii 5 <laughs> Anyway, that's so cheesy. Uh, meanwhile, back at the bank two, bank two, uh, we learned that they detected something in the bank where they are trying to get funds, right? They're trying to tap into an account to get funds. I don't think that this is the same thing as that gold bar that the Snow White crew left behind in that last episode. I don't think it's the same thing. Uh, anyway, we watched Dope right he tries to drum up a plan to try and liberate the bank and capture elena's lieutenant so doke has all these big ideas which we know are really self-serving and it's not so objective uh because he wants to get his ranking back right remember um he was told to follow val and he thought he was getting a demotion <laughs> Anyway, the Snow White crew transfers $10 million to crypto and writes the code on a pamphlet. It looks like a vacationing pamphlet, which I found that they showed us this. So it's no coincidence. It's going to mean something later on. Uh, and Doke's plan all along was to get the hostages released by using the Snow White Lieutenant as a trade, right? He coaxed them with that diamond ring, which we learned had a tracker, tracker in the band, um, and part of the confrontation when they were trying to make the exchange between the lieutenant and the hostages in bank two, uh, they took a shot at the, the young lady, uh, the lieutenant's girlfriend as a way to, well, that shot was way off. And at first I thought it was another plant, right? Like maybe someone from Alina's team intentionally misfired, right? Just to try to scare them. Um, but it wasn't, it was Doke's plan for him to catch up with them as they tried to escape, right? He had to make them believe that they were trying to kill him, kill them. Anyway, they caught up with the Lieutenant and his girlfriend on the bus, part of Alina Snow White crew. Um, they captured them on the bus, the $10 million that was transferred, the code was still on that pamphlet and they intentionally left that pamphlet on the bus by the, uh, on the bus. So they knew they were going to be captured. It was part of this plan. They left that code on the bus and wouldn't you know it, who gets on the bus after they take the other two away? Jamie Alfonso. He has this mask on Well, he has this thing covering up his nose. Um, and so Jamie Alfonso, the escape prisoner, uh, he got onto the bus, took the pamphlet and that note said, good luck. You earned it. And it had the code on it. So clearly that was a payout for him, um, from Elena's crew. All right, back at the Peaksville prison with Owen and Sergey, uh, that guy that they drugged with the eye drops in his drink, um, he's out of the infirmary earlier than they expected. And they keep saying it was four more, four more days till the plan that was, con um, that was still going to be moving forward. So we'll have to see what all that means. Um, at the end of this episode, we saw Val go to Big B's house. Uh, remember she had the address cause she, Lelena said, check your pockets. <laughs> uh, she had, she had the address. So she went over to Big B's house. It was confirmed that he'd been an informant, right? So Anthony did some research and told her, yeah, he was an informant. Um, so he wasn't dead after all these years that Val thought he was. So she went over to the house. She was able to express her pain and he denied that he was, he denied I'm not him. I, Hey, beat it. Yeah, I thought that was so rude. He told her to beat it. Um, she was so emotional and upset. Meanwhile, he was waiting on a deli delivery. And it's a routine he carried on he, um, carried on every night. And it was enough of a, rout of a routine for Elena to have his cigarettes laced with heroin. <laughs> uh, so he overdosed and died right in front of Val on the steps. Right, the deli guy came up, gave him his package, which they, he did every night. He started smoking a cigarette and then he killed over so Elena knew Val would be emotional and wanted to confront Bigsby, a Big B, and the timing was planned so well where Val witnessed him die right on the doorstep. Elena had put an operative in place and waited for Val to show up to carry on the plan, right? And Val was able to see him take his last breath. Um, she tells, she meaning Elena tells Val that this was all necessary because they will need each other in the future. And it was a way of her getting closure. In the middle of this conversation, all of a sudden, all the lights went out and it said to be continued. 
So we should expect to see next week's episode, um, an attack on the federal base where Elaine is being held. Um, so it's going to be really interesting. And I wonder who is the next target? Are there any more people in that photo? I can't remember. I could have sworn I saw the director in that photo, but I'm not sure. Um, but who's the next target? Who do you think? Um, and what did you think of the episode? Did I miss anything? You have to leave me a comment and let me know. All right. And that's all I have. Uh, so be sure to come back and give me a listen. I'd love for you to like, share, follow, and subscribe. And consider leaving me a message. I love to engage with you. All right. My name is Danielle and you're listening to my podcast, Chatter Out Loud. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I appreciate your support. And that's all I have. Thanks again for listening. And I'll talk to you next time.